morning, morning all. If you're new here, my name is Alexander. And yes, it's a bit different today. I'm not giving, oh, as much as I love the allotment, this place is a lot bigger than that. So I'm gonna give you guys a special tour. So here's my log pile. If you're new here, I've been gardening for 14 years and plus I've been working and helping out my tree surgeon friend, Jesse. And yeah, I kind of take the rubbish away, bring it here, turn it into biochar, put on a potash, all sorts, make log piles, you name it. So this pile here, I'm I'm going to take this pile to US. Like we're gonna have a wood burning stove. The thing is, because it's so chunky, I have to spend a day, several days maybe, is chopping it down into little bits. So once that's done, then I can pack the van because my van ain't that big. My well, Susie's dad's gonna help out and fill the van, but I think I got obviously got to prioritize my my home stuff. And please excuse the hedging over there if it's kind of it's very noisy, but that's the countryside life, isn't it? But yeah, I'll just give you a scale of the size. It is big, no? And quickly, just for the so we can tell you the trees. This is Daddy Oak. This is Mummy Oak. And over there is Baby Oak. Also, the sad thing is, I know this. This is going to be. There's going to be. I've seen birds and all sorts fly out of it. So I'm sure there's lots and lots of habitats in there. And I feel bad, but at the same time, I know I've created many more. So, but I, I need to take this wood because it, in US there's hardly any trees, guys, and it's like. Uh, it's just, yeah, this is, this is free fuel in it. So we just moved over a bit. So over there is the, um, the log pile. And here is where I made my kind of slapdash kind of wood stores. <laughs> They're all dilapidated now. And this is um, loads of brash, which is kind of, had like bindweed in and plants I just didn't want to, I went to burn because I was working over here, make, putting a hedgerow in at one point, And I kind of wanted to kind of have some fuel next nearby instead of like piling it all over there. Sorry, sorry to jog you about. Bit of Blair Witchy. But, um, but yeah, so this is my kind of slapdash kind of pile which I've just left here. I'm sure there's loads of inhabitants in there. So that's doing fine. It's all broken down. No bindweed broken, but come back. Surrounded by thistles and all sorts and stuff. But yeah, I kind of rushed to do this because I wanted to please everyone around here because I had like massive piles of wood. I didn't want to piss everyone off, so, so I thought, let's get some free pallets, some old bits of kind of wood you can see there. It's all bowed in the sun. And I am pretty much used the whole of it, really. I've been making potash and biochar, so yeah, it's pretty empty. So yeah, that's this pile. Let's go to the hedgerow. So I don't know why I did it really. I kind of did, I, you know, I know why I did this. Basically, I've got my hedgerow here and to this side I've got my windbreak. And basically what I need to do is kind of create like an arch so I can walk through and it'd be like a little kind of hidden tunnel. I'd be running through with cedar and like skipping hands like, like you see in those kind of, it's just like a little archway. It would look really, really pretty. But um, plus I could, so I could walk through and kind of maintain it in case instead of having to intervene and do all sorts and stuff like that. But the hedgerow is doing really well. And I put a link at the top right of the screen because at one point I had to move it because long story short, I didn't get a surveyor. I thought this was my borderline from, from literally from Baby Oak, which is there, all the way straight down, down the back there. So I'm, oh look, the moon's out. That's why I know when you see the moon out in the day, I kind of feel like it's going to be a good day. And it is a, a motherfucking good day. It's nice and warm on back and welcome a tan. But, um, so, um, so yeah, and lots of house martins out too. But what was I saying? Yeah, I stupidly didn't gonna get surveyor in and the, the borderline, if you look here, you see this, there's these guys are working and building some wooden structure thing. And that's where I thought the border was. So I took an uphill, I planted all this, these guys, poor little guys had to move, they, they're coming back though. And I had to move it, like dig it up. But in the process, as I moved it, I kind of thought, you know, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna make like a proper Hugo mound. So I got some old logs. Like I said, I had more logs over there. So I had like two massive piles. So all those logs there got moved down and put all the way down here. And then, because they were building a new gate over there, had lots of soil, lots of um, old clay. And I just piled that down and then stuck loads of willow slips in there. So I put lilac in here, budlia, like loads of willow, willow slips and all sorts and stuff like that. I can see some, um, I'm not sure if that's good. Oh, that's Brunnera. We don't really want Brunnera here. Or Alcanet, green Alcanet. We all know that plant, right, people? It's a bit like comfrey on steroids, the way it spreads and goes crazy and stuff. And it's quite thuggish, so it will kind of take over. And like I said, the bees like it, but it needs to be kept in check. And if I was staying here, I would... Nice collar. <laughs> Morning. You right? So I was just filming. I was like, I knew I could hear a door. I was thinking, what's going on here? Yeah, okay, you right? Good, good, good. Meet collar. How you doing? 
It might be too dark. Too dark. Too dark. That's the thing yeah. with black people in the sun, oh, man. Oh, we love it. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> we just want to see him anyways. Peace and love. But Collar's, what his plan is, he's going to set up like a little, what are you doing again? I'm doing, we're doing herbs. herbs. All kinds of herbs and spices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then once you've gone where you're going, we're going to take over your set and put more herbs. Nice. And spices. There you go, you hear that? So my blind is going to a good place, so I like Holler. I like what he's doing, I like yeah. what he's about, so happy gardening. Right guys, so look, we're here next to the alder, and you can see the catkins. All is very similar to um, hazel, like I said. But this tree here is a nitrogen fixer, meaning like if you have one of these trees and uh, you want to kind of want to go easier, you can't get hold of any feeds and stuff, you want to be more organic, so plant this tree. It does get really, really tall, but at the same time, trees get big, but you don't have to let them get big. You can cut this down and keep it small. So that's why I planted loads of these there. I had about a good 40. Bit of overkill, because obviously the spread and stuff, but like I said, I was putting in a windbreak, so it makes sense for me to kind of have a dense canopy. And yeah, that's, and that's, that must be, that's mostly why I had the gap. Because I was thinking about the growth, that makes sense. Because the sun goes from behind me, east is like over there, and then kind of pings over my head. You can't really see me now, but ends up over there. So it kind of makes sense. So yeah, look at look into alders. This is alder glut. I put the button on the screen. I can't remember the name exactly, but I think it's Italian alder, and it more it goes. Is it? No, it's not. I'm lying. This is a different type of alder because Italians grow straight up and they're not so bushy, whereas this one kind of grows out and kind of got more curves. I like curves. Just look at my misses. So just for your information, the the hedgerow or this line of hedgerow and windbreak is about 85 meters long. So there's a lot of plants. I say over over 1,500 plants planted here. And it was funny when I planted the day I planted these, I had um, a guy who was six foot seven help me plant them, and the plants were 30 centimeters tall. <laughs> He's quite good at covering up his pains and stuff. But his back must have been killing him because mine was a bit achy, but his one must have been buggered. But anyways, next stop, we'll go down. Basically, there's, there's, there's more windbreak. There's windbreak everywhere, guys. But we're going to go down and see these pallet sheds here. So, hey. So, if you remember, um, I put another a link at the top right of the screen. But this is my Willow vlog. And yeah, you can see how it's bounced back. Willow is rampant, guys. Like it grows so fast. So I'm kind of very wary of um, horseflies right now. But funny thing, they don't like wind. Ah! They don't like wind. <laughs> they don't like wind or oh, rain, basically. But today's slightly windy. But I know there's going to be some bugger. He's on my chest. Look at that. Do you see that? That's what I'm talking about, guys. That is a. Okay, it just flew away. My heart went. Anyways, willow, willow guys, willow, let's talk willow. So willow is a lovely plant, it's tough, it's hardy, like get some willow in your garden guys, because it grows so thick and fast, you can coppice it right back, good for kindling and good for firing. It's aspen's made out of it, it's very good at kind of a rooting hormone, so if you can cut some willow, put it in a jar, put it in, put your plants in that you want to propagate, it gives them a kind of a high percentage of chance of them to surviving. It's just a great plant. So this guy, this is, I mean this is goat and goat and crack willow, I always get confused with my willows. It's a willow, nonetheless. But um, yeah, this one doesn't get too big. And like I said, when you've got a tree in your garden, it doesn't have to get so big. You can always trim it back and keep it nice and small. Whereas this guy, like, this is wild, obviously. The brook is literally just like three meters that way. So it's kind of sprawled out, it's grown so big, and it's kind of fallen down and cracked open and just kind of spread out. And that's why it's kind of so low and stuff. So we can kind of, we can work our magic. Because this one over here, it's kind of big. But again, like I said, you can keep willows in check, you can cut them back, and they're just really great, great habitat. And, the bees go bonkers for the flowers when it comes um, springtime. So yeah, another reason to have willow in your garden, guys. So we have the pallet sheds. So I kind of rushed, I did these, I rushed these. I do have another set, if you can look over here. You might be able to see the top of them. Let me see if you can zoom in. So if I check my zoom, I can't really see. We'll take you over there in a bit anyway. I'm sure you've seen them in our other vlogs. But um, these guys, I kind of rushed to build these. I was going to fill them up with wood. And it was a good idea at the time, you know, you just want projects to do, keep you busy, keep your plans and stuff. But for example, I'm going to have wood in this side, I'm going to have more wood, and then I'm going to have some like wood chip or like bark and stuff. I'm going to have some horse poo and then like miscellaneous stuff. But all that's ended up is that there's stinging that was in this one, there's, there's more wood in that, there's more. Essentially, I made habitats, which is kind of good. But in this one here, I'll show you that there's, I sh let's get a closer look. So you see this, guys? It's a blue drum, I'm kidding. Look at what's on the blue drum. Shit. And it's not just any bird shit. It is 
Ow, shit. Look at my hair, look at that, and tell me to cut this thing. But yeah, owl poop. So yeah, the owls, well, it's not really poop, it's more pellet. Well, it's poop and there's lots of pellets. I used to think, I came in here one time, I was thinking, who is letting their dog come in here and letting them poo right in this corner? Or a cat is like, what is this cat doing? I know it's nice and fluffy and this is dry, but yeah. Owl, was that one there? Yeah, it is one. This is an owl pellet, guys. You can't really tell, it's not exactly the color that you want to see, but um, we flooded. That's another reason why I kind of I knew it wasn't the right right place to kind of put wood and all sorts of stuff you want to keep dry because this place flooded. What the fuck? It's really bad, man. And it kind of, I've never seen it in the five years I've been here, I've never seen it flood before, but then it did. So this should be a more of a darker brown and the owls, they can't, they can't, what do you call it? They can't digest hair and bones and stuff. So they regurgitate and it kind of looks like cat poo. So. Oh, I got another one of these. I was looking for this. I thought I'd lost it. I was thinking someone robbed me. But anyways, I got this back. But yeah, you can see it's quite roomy. Could what? I don't even know. Eight foot by eight foot shed. Yeah, it'll be a nice room. About, it must be about flipping 560 PCM down in Wimbledon. And then you get a toilet in the corner, your cooker here, and then your bed up there, innit? I'm joking, but you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's a nice place. And the owls used to use this one. They used to use this a lot. But they used to more so use that one, but you see other birds in here. But it's weird how they chose this one, but, but yeah. Anyways, let me show you where they live. So here's the sheds. And here are, or here is, sorry, the owl box. I can't even see, that, there it is, there you go guys. This is the owl box. Me and my mate Jesse, well more so Jesse than me, he climbed up there, we trapped some trees back, we kind of cut back, there's another, you can see all the old tree here, you can hardly see it because it's just covered. Literally this tree was huge when it was on the ground, but there's stinging that was taken over and all sorts of stuff like that. It's making my reach look long, like John Jones, like, but um, big. Horse fly around me. Oh, did you hear that? Anyways, back to <laughs> back to owls. Yeah, these guys, this, let, me, let me show you a bit of VT. Like when I've had trip cans, I've got like a, I felt like big brother with owls with the amount of kind of footage I've got of these guys. So let's talk about owls for a little bit. Also, another thing, I might plug my friend. I did sales and go up there and clean the owl box, but I didn't have time and I thought it's only been a year since they've been in there. So there's no, they don't, I can't imagine them, well, birds do shit a lot, but I feel like it can't be, I mean, it's quite deep up there, so that's the thing with owl boxes, you have to kind of keep them clean, keep them fresh, otherwise the owls will move on and go elsewhere. So that's the thing about that stuff. Sorry, it's just a bit of grass, but um... <laughs> but yeah, my friend, she's called um, Hello Sabo, and I was gonna plug her when I climbed up there, and we're gonna, I was gonna make a, um, an owl kind of vlog called, um, what was it? Houses of, no, oh, Parliament's Finest, because a group of owls is called a parliament. And they, people assume that owls are very wise. wise. They're not really big people. They're, they're quite thick. They've just got good hearing and good eyes and that's pretty much it really. And yeah, they can be pretty, but crows are more, more crows are wiser and, and kind of smarter than them. They call them eight birds, but they don't get the good snick, stick because a group of crows is called a murder. I don't think that's by mistake. Blackbird, isn't it? But anyways, so anyways, yeah. So let's just look at some owl footage. This side here is the part of meadow I used to cut all the time. So it's pretty much just wild grass. There's a, quite a few, um, uh, what's the word, docks you can see at the top there, little brown, brown heads. And then further back when you go down there, that's when it kind of gets a bit more wild. 
we can see where I used to manage it because you can see the difference in grass kind of variety. Like there's more stinging nettles on the side and more kind of, there's many different grass varieties. I, I couldn't tell you how many there are here, but there's, there's several. Timothy grass I don't like because it makes me sneeze. So that's why I remember it, but it's time has passed now. So I can roam around freely without sneezing and my eyes watering like so I'm crying all the flipping time. But on this side, as you can see, so I'm gonna turn this way, hold my phone like that. You can see, there's a lot more perennials here. There's thistles galore. I love thistles. These thistles by the end of the month, if it rains a bit more, they should be a lot taller than me. And I've got dock in here. I've put, put some seed balls down, but it'll take a while for the seeds to germinate and kind of kick off and stuff. I'm sure they're in here, but they're kind of kind of small, but there's a lot of seed balls here. So I'm, I'm, I'm fingers crossed they do grow, but pff, the amount of, ugh, there's butterflies galore. Like I, 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 I lose count now how many butterflies I see here. There's bees. It's been a very good year for bonking beetles. And if you're not sure what bonky beetles, I put on the screen now. They're called um, hogweed bonking beetle, red soldier beetle. And their larvae, well, their larvae eat kind of slugs and snails. And they, they always, they're just bonking. I made a post about it on Instagram today. And they bonk like crazy. And they eat aphids. So meadow flowers bring in all the aphids as well, like duck covered in aphids, thistles covered in aphids. And the bees eat the flower. And you've got bonking beetles and all that kind of stuff. Like, put it this way. I'm going to do... I mean, I'm going to go in depth and going to go deep when it comes to a meadow vlog because this, this place here is pretty much 80% meadow, pretty much, and there are great benefits from that. So I will do it in more in depth meadow vlog, but this is my meadow. Get a meadow, guys. Honestly, like, they're so beneficial. And like I said, they're in decline because everyone wants to have a nice kept lawn with like uh, lines and all sorts, which I find boring and bollocks at the end of the day. Like, Grass doesn't want to be cut and kept down all the flipping time. It's only for our purpose. You know what I mean? Like a lawn was pretty much man-made. So, um, so yeah, just get some wildness. I mean, there's, there's grasshoppers and all sorts jumping all over the place. It's just the wildlife is another level. And it's pretty much, it is like, when we think of creature, I've got, a little, I put another link up the top right of the screen, but when you think of creature hotels, a meadow is pretty much essentially one as well. Because like, things live here, they eat here and they jam here and all sorts and stuff. So it's a home for many, many, many different bugs and creatures and all things beneficial for us so so yeah think about it I've got to admit there's something um something quite special seeing um seeing two butterflies flying around playing kiss chase i kind of want to join in also guys there are so many grasshoppers crickets out here right now like apparently a fellow instagrammer she did a little quiz what's her name again she grows wild she has a wild garden i can't remember her name i put her name down in the description but um yeah she she had a, like a little quiz on Instagram, you know, lockdown days, you want to do something. So she had a little quiz that was quite fun, actually. But apparently crickets, the hotter it is, the faster they, they, they make that noise. Crick, crick. It's a sound chirp, as I should say, chirping, innit? And they shake their legs, innit? I should say twerk more than innit, innit? So, here we have Poostick Bridge. And yeah, like I've said before, if, you, if you're new here, there's, there's um, a public footpath going through me. And look, look how still the water is today. Lovely. And no joke, at times you can get up to like, all well, this Himalayan balsam is. And Himalayan balsam, guys, if you see this, this one's looking kind of weak. But there's some down there. It's been nibbled. But um, it's annoying weed. It's quite invasive. It's an annual, so it's kind of easy, good to pro easier to propagate. But the bees love it. They go bonkers for it. But yeah, it just kind of takes over. And it's a bit like, it's almost not weedy in the way it kind of like smothers other things and kind of like nothing underneath grows. But because you've got a waterway, you're going to get seeds that flow down and spread and propagate on the bank. So something to look out for. So Himalayan balsam, my nan had some at one point and she loved it. The bees used to, me and my cousin used to kind of pull the flowers together in a little and listen to the bees go bonkers and see like, Whoa! and then run off screaming inside like, ah! But um, yeah, she kind of got infested with it. So. It took her about a couple of years to get rid of it after that, and we've never seen it since. So, so yeah, just keep your eyes peeled. But anyways, look, and down here, you can see just at the back down there is where just all the kind of debris is falling in and built up and kind of caught on the bank of the um, the brook. And no joke, my friend, we had like a little argument. He kind of thought it was a beaver, but yeah, there's no beavers here. I'd love to see beavers because obviously this is like it would like mostly flood this whole place. But at the same time, the ecosystem would be would be there. It's nice now. But yeah, be, I'm sure be, it would open up more habitats for all different types of stuff, flora and fauna alike, if you know what I mean. So, so yeah, this is Poostick Bridge. She walk in it one day. There's no, what's the word? There's no gruff underneath. Is that that Billy Goat's gruff? Can't remember that story, but 
yeah, it's lovely. When the stream's running, especially winter time, you can, it's good, good, good day for poo stick. So, if you don't, well, if you don't know what poo stick, this is what poo stick is. You get a stick, you don't get poo, and you break the stick, and you got a group of friends or whatever standing here, your arch enemies, and you get your stick, you drop the stick, and then you go inside, and you're like, <laughs> and you're on this side, and you see who makes it down into the stream the quickest, because there's no current right now. It's a bit of a shit game, but yeah, that's poo stick. Alright guys, I'm whispering, but there's something in there. Something moved in there. I don't know what it was. I don't want to scare the shit out of it or myself, but I do want to investigate. But yeah, I'm at the, the far end of the plot. Yeah, I can hear it, if you can hear it. Listen, it's like David Amber moment. It's crawling right now. I don't know if it's walking towards me or not. I don't know my secretaries either. I have envisions of like a flipping, what do you call it? Psh, like a fucking jaguar jumping out or something. I hope not. Flipping a deep voice, you know, and people go, hey, get away. I'm joking, let's have a look. Let's have a look, see what it is. Get my camera ready, I'm on my phone, in case it runs away. My, my, I kind of my money's on, it's a pheasant, female. Look, proper like Bambi, I didn't mean to disturb them. Well, I kind of did read and I want to come over here, but I didn't know we're there. So yeah, another reason to have meadow, guys, especially if you live out in the sticks. Like, it's a nice, perfect place for mummy and daddy, or mummy especially, to go off and go and feed and kind of do what she's doing. And then the babies can just sit in the long grass and be like, and play um, Game Boy and stuff. And yeah, that's quite sweet. I feel bad. There's a pheasant over there, so my money, I'd have lost my money if I said that, but yeah, two baby deer. I just leave them alone. I'll be quick here because horse flies, horse flies zero, me about 15 right now. I've been doing all this kind of stuff trying to get them away from me. But if you see my other vlogs over here, I've put in, look how long that grass was. Look at that. Jeez. Tall, isn't it? Grasses don't ramp at times. And look on this piece of blade of grass, there's a bonking beetle. So they had time to shine this year. I'm sure they'll be in papers and all sorts and stuff like that. But anyways, so this patch here, it's quite big, it's quite roomy. And what I was going to do is turn it, I wasn't, I'm not going to say what it is, I'm going to try and do the same thing in Uist. It's a perfect spot, I don't really come here that much since where the deers are down here. I'm um, deer, sorry. So yeah, I was going to do kind of, just surrounded by trees. I was going to cut down some ash trees because they're kind of big and they're right next to the um, telephone lines. And I know there's ash dieback and stuff, I know they're kind of dying out and stuff, but in my in return I was going to plant some more ash trees because there's loads of seeds on these guys. Look, well, I'll show you, we're seeing the VT just now, like this ash tree is falling down due to the wind, but it was very, very old and it passed its cell by date at the same time it's not entirely dead it was still thick enough and come from the base so it's almost like it coppiced itself in a weird way so to speak so so yeah this is the kind of far end you see on the screen now and yeah it's quite a big bit and i'm just going to let this be that the wildest bit that kind of is right really because like i said i don't jam here and then we've got deer so um there you go this is the this is the far corner the kind of the arse end of the um, persica meadows Also, I've been vlogging for like, God knows how long, about a couple of couple of months, well, since November, 
and I never knew that the, the tripod could do this. Yeah, but you just like just strolling through, I don't know, walking through long grass. Let me have um, shorts on, I don't mind, I just thought I'd wear these today because I know there'll be horse flies. A lovely windy day, it's nice, and you see all the butterflies and the bugs. Oh, we've got rag, what's it called? Rag, ragwort. Also guys, not a plant you see every day in the meadow, but we have here, I sprinkled these seeds out, I did this purposely, but we've got some Verbena venariensis. Look at this guy, look at this little copper. And let's see if we can see what ran away from me just then, what distracted me. Oh, you're staring at my ass. So here are my pallet sheds. So we come from all the way down there, and now we are here. And this one at one point was full of horse poop. Really easy to make, guys. They're all different types of pallets, but I tend to want to go for the ones which are kind of 120 by 100 centimeters. And yeah, you want to get the kind of similar size pallet. So I went crazy. I think I've got over like 300 pallets in, not in these, but just in the whole area in general, just to kind of just pallet mad. Like, I think it was very hard to get over the pandemic because everyone was trying to do their DIY projects and stuff. But um, I had enough, fortunate enough to kind of finish this place. Anyways, I'm blabbing. So yeah, so this guy, I've kind of made these for kind of all my stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it, they settled in well. I've raised them off the ground. So they've got like a couple of bricks underneath just to kind of so they don't rot as, as well quick. And because I know they will do, that's, that's life. So um, so yeah, they've, they've done really well. So here's my miscellaneous wood pile. And it's right next to the pallet sheds here. And behind here are my water butts and stuff. They filled up nicely. One found down the other day and they must have made like some almighty bang. But um, yeah, good rainwater. I know I still got some rainwater in there. I should go and check them and see if I can give them to my spuds because they like fresh rainwater. So I never, I don't like chucking wood away. Like if I see people chucking wood out on the skip, I'm like, can I have that, can I have that? And I've got a lovely, I've got more wood over, oop, I've got more wood over there too. You just can't really see it. But, um, but yeah, always keep your wood people, honestly. Like it's just, it's silly the amount of stuff we chuck away. It's really, really sad. Even if like, even if it's like, it's untreated, it doesn't matter. Cause at the end of the day, like you could put it good to use or use it for something, or if it, or we could just make a pile, just make a pile of it there and then you create like a creature hotel. So behind me are my compost heaps and I've got a good maybe, maybe 20 here. And when I was working, doing my, my business, I kind of just needed a place to kind of chuck stuff. I didn't kind of have bulbs piling up. And plus it saved me a lot of money to take it to the dump. So I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that business anymore. So I can feel like I can give away my secrets here. But if you're fortunate enough to have a piece of land, make compost heaps and make your own kind of compost and you can give it back to the clients and so on. It's just a, it's a nice loop right there. So what I, what I did, what I planned, was on one side use it for the summer time and one side use it for the winter time. So on this side, which is the sunny spot, I sprinkled a load of seeds on here, like, and I've got like honest seed, there's dock, I've just seed it's like, it's wild. And on this side, I keep it kept, if you know what I mean, you can see it's really low down. So in the summertime, I pour it in here whilst this, the beneficiaries on this side are kind of loving the honesty and then feeding all over the stinging nettles and the dock and all sorts. And when come winter time now, this will be falling down now and spread its seed and do what it's doing. Then I can start using this side whilst this side is rotting down. So does that make sense? So that's why I kept it. That's why I kind of, there's, there's a, what's the word? A method to my madness. Oh, we're in the greenhouse. Haven't guessed already. So yeah, it's looking lush in here. Oh look, another thing to do. I've mentioned it before. See flowers and potatoes, pull them off. More potatoes. You don't want flowers on there because if the plant put more energy into making the flowers that are your potatoes. We don't want that. No, uh, uh. So yeah, in here is looking lush. And I say the potatoes got blight. It looks like it, but I'm not sure. They're kind of just very leggy. And I've laid these guys right to the top. I could put some more in, but I want to keep them in here quarantined away from the other ones in case they do spread whatever they've got. Because it's natural and everything to get disease. So these tomatoes look a bit leggy. I should really tie them up. 
think that's what happens when you're in the greenhouse and they're overly warm they get like this but those ones outside they can have left their own devices and it's warm but not as hot and look, it's 34 degrees in here if you can read that that's yeah, quite warm that is quite warm but um yeah look at this squash the beans going crazy now beans climbing up i've put these trellis well you saw them in the last vlog i put this up so um yeah the beans are going crazy this if you could feel how furry this is it's ridiculous like it's so like it's it's weird it's like rough and ready a bit like comfy but more fluffy and here's this squash this has got flowers on it's a bit of a sausage fest because there's lots of boys in there no girls yet sad times loads of courgettes oh look I should bring some home wow it's quite thorny i didn't expect that and a bit of end rot there i should take that off but um but yeah i'm very pleased with this i'm very pleased with this greenhouse and Colin better look after it and look, I remember I was playing with cedar with, um, oh crap, let me see if I can grab it. Uh, I've got some rubbish on there, but this is old snake skin. I don't remember putting it in there, but at the same time, if there's snakes in there, there's snakes in there, so they can get the rats. So, um, yeah, this is it. And I'm glad you stayed for the long haul and enjoyed the tour. So I'm not sure what I'm doing next. It's all just a bit of a wild one, but, um, yeah, I think actually I'll be cutting down some comfrey. I think that's the best thing to do because I want to dig some up and put some in pots and stuff and then take them up to um, to lovely Scotland. So I'm going to keep them and spread them and give them give them to people and like, because everyone needs comfrey. Get some comfrey in your garden, guys, and get a meadow too. That's the one thing. That's the moral of the story today. Meadows and comfrey and wildflowers and insects and everything. Like, just think about it. If you've got the space to do something nice for other things about for yourself, get some wildlife in there because it will benefit you. It's better for the planet. It's better. It's like, it's just, just good, man. It's just bloody good. So anyways, happy gardening, guys and girls. And see you soon. Love you a long time. Peace and hugs. And stay green. <laughs>